Okay, superstars, we're gonna hop right into it because it is, believe it or not, 4.53 in the morning. And I had shot a previous video before this one, so we're gonna hop right into this. As you can see, I already have one eye that's completed over here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start on this eye. Meant to do my brows, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on camera because I am not going to go back over this from the beginning and re-record. So we're gonna go ahead and do our brows first. You have to excuse me because I'm a little congested. My sinuses are acting up a little bit. Yeah, so we're gonna go in to my Starry Eyeliner Gel, which is in dark brown. And we're gonna go ahead and complete the other brow. Next, I'm gonna use my Elf eyeshadow primer and put this all over my lid. Go ahead and take that all the way up to my brow bone area. And for those of you who are wondering if I, in case you may ask, did I use my line erase serum that I usually use up under my eyes? Yeah, but I just didn't record it, so it's off camera when I applied it. So moving right along, I'm going to use my CoverGirl Medium Concealer that I have depotted in this little pot right here. And I'm going to take my angle brush and we're going to apply that under the brow bone area so we can clean it. Next, I'm going to dive into my Douche by Juvia's Place palette and I'm going to pick up these two colors right here and combine them together for my transitional shade on my lid. That sounded so dead when I said that. <laughs> but that's what it is. Actually, no, my bad. We're going to go in with this color first. I don't know what I was thinking. This color down here at the bottom of the palette, we're going to use that in the transitional area of our lid and we're gonna apply it right there and the brush I'm using happens to be a brush that I had got from Ipsy um, it's my Farrah um, like blending brush I guess you can say you can use any fluffy blending brush that looks like this and we're just gonna apply that all the way up to the brow bone area it's gonna look kind of milky and chocolatey at first, but that's okay. We want this area to be neutral because I'm just trying to let the other colors on my lid shine. Okay, now we're going to go into the color that we're gonna apply in that transitional area or actually in the crease. And we're going to use these two colors right here. We're gonna mix them together and put them right in the crease area. And I'm using my Sigma Tapered blending brush, my E40, um, to apply this color into my crease. These two colors mixed together. Yeah, I'm just putting this into. Can you see that? Yeah. And we're just putting that right into the crease area, taking it a little higher up because, as you can see, we're going to cut this crease. And we want that color peeking out from underneath there. So we're just gonna apply that right slightly above the crease. I have small lids. I wouldn't say they hooded, but I do have small lids. I'm gonna use my NYX Jumbo Milk Pencil in white. And I actually put some on the back of my hand right here. And I'm gonna take my MAC 242 shader brush, my flat shader brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the crease 
on my lid. This part usually requires some time, so I try to take my time. One quick tip that you can do when you're cutting your crease is once you start applying um, the concealer or the base or whatever it is that you're going to use, I usually start from the inner corner. Um, for most, they like to start in the middle of the lid, right into the um, crease of the top of your lid. And one trick that you can do in order to find your um, cut crease or where you apply your border at is to look up and, excuse me, ooh. Look up and you can usually, um, like some of the concealer will actually touch the top of your lid where your crease is and that'll determine where your border is. But I didn't do that in this case because like I said, I usually start in the inner corner and work my way up. But you can always start in the middle and place your concealer here and then look up and wherever the concealer touches up here in this area of, of the top part of your upper lid, that's usually where you can start cutting your crease at. So, just a little quick tip. Now in some cases I like to go over the top of the crease and kind of like define it. It's pretty sharp as you can see, but in order for me to get that peekaboo effect so that the colors that we place down in the transition on the crease area can kind of shine through. So I like to take a little sharp small brush or just a little brush that's kind of precise, but I usually use my angle brush. And I like to go back into my palette of the colors that I chose, especially the dark crease color um whatever that may be that's slightly above the cut crease and i like to kind of sharpen it a little bit and um make it pop so i kind of go in there and go above it and place more color And I usually use a pat pull motion, just pat pull, pat pull, pat pull, pat pull, pat pull, pat pull in order to place the color so that that crease can be a little sharp and we can show a little bit more definition of the colors and they don't just fade away or I, you know, I may have covered it with my concealer and then you can't see the colors that I put in the transitional area. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going above it. places that color around that cut crease almost like a halo type of effect okay today we're going to play in my DIY palette right here and in this palette I have all of my coastal scents colors um, a while back I had did a video on these when I had did a um, hot pot haul on these which is what these are called these are hot pot single shadows and this is what they look like I have them labeled up here because they don't have label names on the bottom of the pots. So this is what you're looking at here. These are all Coastal Scents colors. And we're gonna play with these colors today for this um, pretty look. And um, we're gonna go, the first color that we're gonna go into and use is this minty fizz color right there. It's like a minty sea green, which is this color right here on my lid. So, the. The lighting in here is horrible, but 
basically that's what that color looks like right there it's like a minty green fizzy color i'm going to provide a picture after this so you can get the true color of it because this light is But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place that on the inner half of our lid. And I'm gonna pick up a generous amount. And we're going to place that, like I said, it's like, that's what it looks like. It's a really, really pretty green. It's a minty green color. So we're gonna apply this on the inner second half of the lid. This color is so gorgeous. I've been wanting to use this for a minute now. So I thought it would be pretty dope to use this for this particular look. So yeah, it's really, really pretty. And I'm just patting it on because you'll get better color payoff that way. Especially when you're working with a concealer base, you don't want to move it or disturb it too much and then it gets mixed in with your color and it turns out to be an ugly mess. So we, 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 don't, we, we don't want that, okay? We're not having that. So <laughs> we're just patting it on. And then we're gonna go into our next color. Now for each color, I'm using a separate brush. And in this case, I'm using e.l.f. brushes for each color. And this Revlon brush um, basically was used to apply the first color, which is the large lid space color that I just put on there, which is the Minty Fizz. So now that we've used that brush, we're gonna use another brush. Um, I like to keep the colors clean and you know not mixed together unless I'm, I'm blending the edges, but I like to use a separate brush for each color. It just comes out for a cleaner application. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply our next color, which is this gorgeous berry shade in here. Really, really pretty, right there. It's like a rose color. This one is called Cinnabar Rose. So that's the one we're gonna put on our lid next. So we're gonna pick up that color and we're gonna place it right behind that minty fizz, right there. See? We're just gonna come in next to it and just pat the color on so we can get the full color. being careful to stay within the borders of our cut crease towards the top. We don't want to disturb our hard work up there. Otherwise, it won't be a cut crease. And I'm slightly overlapping over that minty green um, color, that minty fizz, um, so that we can get somewhat of a blend. And then we'll come back in later and we'll define the color a little bit more. We'll kind of blend it a little bit better. Now we're gonna to work towards the top. So we get that color towards the top without going over that border. Like I said, we, want, we don't wanna go over that because we wanna keep that cut crease sharp. Now we're gonna blend between the two colors, the minty fizz and the center of our rose. So we're just blending, going back and forth, a little at a time, but back and forth between the two colors so we can get a nice blend, no harsh lines. Now I'm gonna go back in and Place more minty green on top of that minty fizz or whatever you want to call it. We'll go back in and just place, just pat. Okay. Now we're gonna go into amethyst, which is this color right here. Really, really, really beautiful color. That's going to go in our crease. So we're gonna place that in our outer crease and blend it into the cinnabar rose. And amethyst is a slightly darker color, but it's a purple, purplish color. 
that we're going to blend in on over here and just place it. Just slightly overlapping that cinnabar rose so we can get a nice little blend. And then towards the end of the crease, which is right here, I'm kind of going in in this area and then slightly over that crease so that I can blend it and kind of fade it out. That way you don't see that sharp line right up in there. So I'm just slightly going into it and then above it, just slightly. And just kind of blending in back and forth on the edges. And just kind of going up into that cut crease, the end of that cut crease line, so we can kind of fade it, blend it out a little bit. And kind of go in. As you can see, it's well blended in. Now to darken it a little bit, we're gonna go back into the palette and we're gonna to touch Deep Grape, which is this color right here. And we're going to make that amethyst just a little bit darker so we can get some clear, distinct, like, separation of colors in that corner. So we're just gonna, ooh, excuse me, slightly go over that. And as you can see, it gets a little bit darker. It just deepen it. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth while I'm patting to place that color and get that blend, as you can see. See how well that blended in? That's all I'm doing. Just going in and placing that color. And this is the deep grape because we want to see a clear distinction between the colors, the blend between the colors, so that's what we're doing. And I'm just going in between the colors, in between cinnabar rose and the deep grape and amethyst mix that we just placed. And I'm just going back and forth and I'm just blending the colors together. That way you get this beautiful blend on the eye. See it? Now we're going to go back into the Juvia's Place palette. And we're going to pick up this really, really beautiful light like pastel pink, which is this color right here. And we're gonna place this on the inner third of the eye right there and blend that into the minty fizz. And I'm using a small, like really small shader brush by e.l.f. I find that this is really, really precise and it's kind of sharp. And it helps me to get into those little tight corners so that I can place my color. And it hugs like right up against that cut crease line so I can place this with the sharpness like okay <laughs> like it does the trick every time I mean, the edges are so tapered, they go like right into those little corners and just hugs that that um, cut crease line. It doesn't really go over it, it's just perfect. And there you have it, perfect. I'm going back into my Coastal Sense palette and I'm gonna pick up this deep grape and it's gonna define the top of my crease. So we can, you know, be able to get a nice blend up there and get some more, um, I guess you can say a dark color and more warmth and it'll kind of define the crease even more. So we're gonna take that small shade of brush, this time I cleaned it off, and we're gonna take the edge of the brush and we're just gonna go into the color itself and we're gonna place it right above the crease so we can sharpen that crease. And now that we have that placed, I'm gonna take a clean blender brush. And in this case, I'm gonna use my, my Morphe, what is this? My Morphe R35, okay? <laughs> we're gonna use that and we're just gonna softly go above this and kind of blend this out. 
so nothing stands out. Okay. Now that we have that defined, we can move on to the next step. I already cleaned off one of my e.l.f. shader brushes that I used on my lid, and we're going to go back into the Coastal Scents palette, and we're going to pick up some deep grape. Actually, we're going to pick up the amethyst first, which is that beautiful shimmery um, plum purple, and we're going to apply it to the lower lash line. And like I said, I normally don't um, apply shadow to my lower lash line because my eyes are really, really sensitive to certain products, and they get really itchy. Um, I just think I got sensitive skin, period. So that's the reason why it doesn't pay for me to always apply you know, eyeshadow or anything along my lower lash line. But in this case, I'm gonna make an exception because this look is so pretty that I actually wanna carry this out um, down to my lower lash line and carry it across. So we're going to apply some of the deep amethyst to the lower lash line and just blow it out. taking it all the way in almost to the inner third of um, my lash line without carrying it over too much and I'm just gonna blow this out and bring it all the way down to kind of smoke out this eye then I'm gonna take a smaller um, the, um, detail brush like this which is the elf brush that I used in the inner corner of my eyes clean this off also we're gonna go back in here and we're going to pick up some deep grape, um, the shade that we used on the outer third of our eyes to kind of deepen the amethyst. We're going to do the same thing, go over the outer third of my lash line, and we're going to deepen this and smoke it out. I normally don't line my waterline either for the same reasons because my eyes get really itchy and very sensitive but I wanted to kind of like open up this eye I didn't want to do anything dark and make my eyes look closed in with all of this bright spring colors on my eyes so we're gonna just use my Milani brow and eye highlighter and I'm going to use the brow side because it's matte um, the eye side is a little bit shimmery to which I'm not really crazy about which looks like that it's really shimmery I would rather use the brow side because it gives me a mattified like nude type of um shade on my eye right there so we're just going to use that side to line my waterline up my eyes a little bit because we just want to keep a light look with this so um, no black eyeliner okay no 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 <laughs> that's not what we're doing today so yeah on to the next step you know the drill Rimmel's extra lash mascara super extra lash mascara in black black we're gonna apply that to our lids I'm not doing a um, winged eyeliner because I just want to keep the eye light, airy, you know, flirty with just the lashes, no eyeliner or anything like that to make the look, look way down or heavy. So we're just going to apply our mascara and then our lashes. Gonna apply my Salon Perfect Go Glam Lashes in the number style 614, which are my favorites. They're so gorgeous. They're like long and flirty. They give you just enough drama without it being a heavy lash, but just just enough. You know what I'm saying? So I absolutely love these lashes. I already have one on, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the other. Looks like that. Okay, y'all, so you know the routine. Um, it's onto my face. And right here, I'm just using Becca's um, Liquid Foundation in Maple on my skin. And I'm just going through, you know, my regular routine. Um, it hasn't really changed that much since 
I have begun doing videos, so the next following steps you're going to see is what I normally do for my face routine. And that's it. And that concludes the end of this tutorial to this beautiful pastel spring look. I hope you superstars loved it. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to hit the notification bell for any more future updates or uploads as I make them to my channel, which are coming fast and soon. Okay, all of my superstars, I love you all. Bye.